Yararo Marava Kundave Hari Pijana Balaba Kiribana Dari Kopijana Balaba Kiribana Dari Jasur Nandana, Vijjana Randana Jasur Nandana, Vijjana Randana Chamun Tira Chamun tira bun tari Jaya rado marava kundavi hari Kope janna bala ba Gidi vana dadi Jasura nandana Bajjana ranjana Jamun te labun Jaya Rada Marava Kundavi Hari Jaya Rada Marava Kundavi Hari Jayum Vishnupad Paramahansa Pari Vijayakacharya Asita Dashishim is Divine Grace Abhaya Chiran Bhukti Vedanta Sai Maharaj Shila Prabhupada Ki Iskan BBT Founder Acharya Jagaguru Shila Prabhupada Ki Ananda Karavaisha Bindi Ki Nam Charya Shila Haridas Thakur Ki Prem Shri Goho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Dvaita Gadara Shiva Sadi Goho Bhakti Bindi Ki Say Sri Radhakishan Gugupinath Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Gwadan Ke Vrindavan Dham Ke Matura Dham Ke Dorka Dham Ke Navarib Dham Ke Jagannapur Dham Ke Chamuna Mai Ke Ganga Mai Ke Tulsi Maharani Ke Bhakti Deva Ke Sambeda Bhakti Vinda Ke Sri La Prabhupada Ke Say Sri Radha Giri Dari Ke Shri Krishna San Kirtana Jiga Ki Gopremanandi All glories of the sum of devotees All glories of the sum of devotees All glories of the sum of devotees All glories of divine Lotus Vita Shri Shri Guru and Gauranga Hey Janardanji, I have a question for you. Is this blasting out to the universe or is it in-house? Oh, good. Yeah, that's true. It could be both. Not mutually exclusive. 
kid. You want to sit on my lap? <laughs> you want to be out of striking distance. Um, sh I think we should, do you mind just opening that door just a crack so we have a little fresh air? That would be nice. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayana Namaskuchan, Nanam Chaivam Narotama, Devim Sarasatim Vyasam, the Toja Dai Udirayat. Narayana Namaskuchan, did I say that already? Nasta Prayesha Abadishu, Nitim Bhagavati Sevaya, Bhagavati Uttama Shloke, Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki. So, let's look up the verse because it's not on the board. And we are on text 31, correcto? Correct. Before we begin our study of Srimad Bhagavatam, which is a very means of conquest, we should first offer respects to the person of the God and Ryan, the Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, the goddess of the most Saraswati, the author, Srila Vyasadeva, my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada. The Bhagavatam is the as a son, is arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna to his own abode, accompanied with knowledge, religion, etc. Persons who have lost their vision to the dense darkness of the sage of Kali shall get light out of this Purana. Ya etad adav asrijaj characharam swa Maya yat ma shreya vitak yaya Tayaiva so yam kila gobtum udita katam nu mam dharma paro chigham sati Ye tada da basu judge chada chadam Swamaya yad ma shraya ya vitark ya ya Tayaiva so yam kila gop to mudyata Katam nu mam dharma porojig hum city Ye tada da vas rijaj chara charam Samaya yat ma shraya ya vitark ya ya Taya eva so yam kila gop to mudyata Katam numam dharma porojig hum city Yo e tada da vas rijaj chara charam Swamaya yat ma shraya ya vitark ya ya Taya eva so yam kila gopta mudyata Katam numam dharma parojikam sati Ye e tada da vas rijaj chara charam Samaya yat ma shraya ya you're on strike, Deva Vrata? Hard, no, no problem. Go ahead, take it away. Go. Go. No, I threw him off, whoever was chanting. 
Go ahead, Mataji. Yadi Tarada Vasuja Chacharam Swamaya Yat Mashaya Yat Higaya Tayaiva Soyam Kilagok to Mudita Katam Numam Dharma Paro Jigham City. Don't be shy, you want to give it a shot? I, if I don't put you in anxiety. So yes or no? We're all friends here. You get it wrong, you won't turn into a pumpkin. Swamaya yat mashraya yat divakya Tayeva soyam kila gupta Tayeva soyam kila gupta Katam numam dharma paro Katam One who? Etat These Adao In the beginning of creation Asrajat Created Chara acharam, moving and non moving, living entities. Swamayaya, by his own potency. Atma ashrayaya, sheltered under his own protection. Avitarkyaya, inconceivable. Tvaya, by that same Maya. Eva, certainly. Sa he, I am this protection. Oh, what did I? Uh, no, this king. Sorry, skip the line. Kila certainly. Gop to mudyata. Ha, hold on. Gop, gop to udyata. Prepared to give protection. Katam how? Nu mam. Oh, nu then. Mam, me, Dharma Pada, one who is strictly following religious principles. Jigam Sati, desires to kill. Translation. Anyone know who's speaking other than Dravida Prabhu? Mother Earth, who's she speaking to? What's the scene? Ah, ladies, what's the scene? Do we know what the scene is? Devavrata, what's the scene? For not giving all the grains and milk and not, yeah. And now she's making her case. Okay. Translation. In the beginning of creation, you, meaning Krishna, created all these moving and non-moving living entities by your inconceivable energies. Through this very same energy, you are now prepared to protect the living entities. Indeed, you are the supreme protector of religious principles. Why are you so anxious to kill me, even though I am in the form of a cow? Also, you say, in the beginning of creation, you created all these moving and non-moving living entities by your inconceivable energy. Through this very same energy, you are now prepared to protect the living entities. Indeed, you are the supreme protector of religious principles. Why are you so anxious to kill me? even though I am in the form of a cow. Purport. The planet Earth argues that there's no doubt that one who creates can also annihilate by his sweet will. The planet Earth questions why she should be killed when the Lord is prepared to give protection to everyone. After all, it is the Earth that is the resting place of all other living entities, and it is the Earth that produces grains for them. Om Gina Tamarandasya Gina Gina Salakya Chakshushum the Tangina Tazari Shi Gurave Namaha. Does this remind anyone? What did it was? I got to go back and forth because we don't have it on the board. But it says in the beginning of creation, you created all these moving 
and non-moving living entities. Does this remind anyone other than Dravida of a section in Bhagavad Gita? What is that section? You don't have to pair it. You can just paraphrase. All right. I was thinking of something else. What were you thinking? Uh, that's good, though. I sent forth men, generations of men and demigods. And he says, he, may, he puts a formula there. Krishna puts a formula. It's not that Prabhupada says, just like if the, if the father wants to, the son to stay comfortably in the, ho in the home, at home, but if the child is arrogant, foolish, I narrated, I think, the time I ran away from home when I was a boy. I ran away from home. I was about five years old, maybe six, but I was not more than that. And I uh, had some argument. My parents wanted me to stop watching cartoons and go to bed or brush my teeth or, you know, something completely reasonable. But no, I was very stubborn, as I still am. So uh, I said, all right, I'm, I'm running away. I'm leaving home. And my very intelligent parents said, my father said, oh, that's, we're sorry about that. You know, but uh, all right, it's what you want to do, you know. And my mother picked up on the vibe, packed me a little lunch. <laughs> I thought, oh, jeez, man, <laughs> they're taking me seriously, you know. And, uh, you know, I put a few clothes and a little backpack, and my mother gave me my little three, four sandwiches. My father very intelligently pinned a big note on me, which I didn't know what it said, but it was my name, my phone number, his phone number, you know. And uh, off I went, opened the door, off I went. And I remember I got to the end of the driveway. I was completely freaked. I turned to the right, because that's the way my school was, and I got to the end of the street there, and... I burst into tears. I didn't know whether to go left or right, what to do. And my father, who had been discreetly following behind me in his car, pulled up and said, oh, how's it going? <laughs> Funny meeting you here. You know, he hadn't taken his eye off me, you know. I, I, I jumped into the car. I never ran away again until I joined the Hare Krishna movement. But, um, so, but Krishna, even though we want to reject him, we want to be independent of him, we want, to, we want our own place where we can be the Lord of all we survey, Krishna gives all facility. He, gives, he, he sets up this world. What is, I mean, Krishna gives that formula that there has to be grains, and the grains depend on what? I mean, Prabhupada makes the point. What is it, when Prabhupada refers to grains, he often says, because other than Dravida, what does he say? You cannot eat. I said, other than you. We want these other guys to eat their brains to exercise. Um, yeah, you can do so many. Ultimately, when you get down to the, and what do grains depend on? Yagya. Oh, before the grain, before yagya, what comes? Has to be rain. If you don't have any rain, you don't have any grains, right? So, and you can't live on nuts and bolts. You can't live, you know, we, we have a, what is it called, a service economy? It's all, you know, banking and finance and credit cards and health insurance, you know, whatever. It's a service economy. But you can't eat your computer printout, <laughs> you know, whatever it is. Can't eat it. Your insurance policy, <coughs> it's not going to do you so much. You gotta live on grains and foodstuffs, and you know. And where does that come from? It comes from rain. You don't have rain. You know the famous thing is here: this uh, El Centro and Coachella Valley and all that stuff was desert. It was barren desert. Nothing. They used to, you know, Yuma, Arizona. We used to say there's humans, and there's humans. You know, you live in Yuma, you know? I mean, it was a godforsaken place. You know what made it, what changed it? Colorado, yes, the dam. Colorado River water. All they did was add water. And the whole place, it was, it's the, bigger, the biggest producer of citrus. Used to be, I don't know what it is now, but it used to be. And, and leafy vegetables, winter vegetables, they all come from, you know, 
that whole it was 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 barren desert and the only thing that changed was they added water so if you want you we have to live on grains food stuff it depends on rain you can't create rain even if you can seed the clouds you know what it what it what are you actually doing when you seed the clouds yeah but you're stealing from somewhere else you're not creating new water I mean, there's been big wars over it. You know, they, they seed in one county and they get the water and the next county doesn't get water and they've sued each other. Yeah, you're not creating new water. You're just forcing it to drop sooner where you want it and just depriving someone else. So, and what the and, as you said, and, okay, well, we can't create rain, but what causes rain? Jugya. There's a system you have to recognize the devas that you know you have to you know pull the levers and wheels and grease the machinery by proper supplications and uh, and what does yoga depend on prescribed duties you have to act if you're a brahmin you act like a brahmin if the machinery if the you ha the point is this world is purnam krishna's purnam what and can anyone think of a verse other than Dravida? Can anyone think of a verse that makes this point about Purnam? And 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 I just I don't know how else is. Anybody else? Om Purnam and what does Om Purnam Adha Purnam Idam mean? Yeah, but what does it mean? Okay, but what also does it mean? Dravida. He can he, because he's complete. He can emanate so many complete units, and the example right there is of these of this universe. So it's complete. It's Purnam. The sun, they tried just like alchemy. They're trying to they tried to make gold from. You know how you make gold from mercury, mercury other than Dravida? Does anyone know how it's done? How you can turn. Uh, copper into gold. Prabhupada describes it's a yogic process. You eat mercury, you drink mercury, you pass urine, and you soak the copper in that urine. I don't know if tin may be mixed in there somewhere, and you will get gold. What's the problem with this? Mercury is highly poisonous. You have to be a great yogi to do it, you know. But Prabhupada describes, and it's there in the uh, some Veda somewhere how to do it. But, huh? No, not yet. A few treasures, maybe. Don't tell Dianiti. Um We don't want to lose him. So the point is that um, just as there was alchemy, and they're still pursuing it. It's actually the root of nuclear energy, before they turned it into a bomb, was how to create a free energy machine, a machine that just keeps running. Ultimately, every machine breaks down, wears out. The pendulum will swing less, less, and ultimately it'll stop. So, you know, but they've been trying to find a free energy machine since time immemorial. But frankly, of course, ultimately everything ends. Everything material has a beginning and an end. But to a large degree, as far as our experience, or you know, our existence, this world is a free energy machine. The sun shines on the ocean. Does anyone know why there's salt in the ocean? It controls the distillation rate, and it acts as a preservative. It's not there by chance. So the sun shines, the water evaporates, it forms the cloud, the cloud is blown by the wind. It beats on the mountains. When it beats on the mountain, it brings all the nutrients, all the minerals out of the mountains, and it waters and fertilizes all the crops, picks up all the trash, all the sewage, all the waste, drops it on the bottom of the ocean, and it Krishna is Parameshwara. He's the supreme, complete controller. See, rich. So this creation, it's a, because Krishna is perfect, it's created perfectly. But you got to work with the machinery. You can't put a monkey in there. Monk, put, put a monkey inside, and he's pulling all the levers, and he's getting his tail caught in the gears, you know. It's a, 
So we're just like monkeys. We're pulling all the gears and this and that, and everything goes my way. Artificial this, recreate that. Even water. They take everything out and they put artificial stuff back in. I mean, just leave it alone. Krishna says, I'm the pure taste in water. So the we live, the fact of the matter is, and it is a field of science that does anyone know the statistical argument by Sadaputa that explains creation, uh, that it pr it proves the existence of a designer? What is that example? Well, I mean, you, you wrote a technical paper to explain the ring theory, right? And I write for much of that. We calculated the, uh, what is it called? The information, you know, that's actually there in the universe multiplied out. It was way too much, way, way, way too much to where we really have a chance. In yes, well said. In layman's terms, the world is so, the e universe is so interdependent and finely tuned. If the sun were just a little further away, everything would freeze. If it was a little closer, everything would burn to ash. If it was all, you know, how does the whole, y y you change the temperature of the water off chili, make it a little more chilly in chili, the water. And in due course of time, it'll change all the ecological systems, all the inter. You can study a piling on a pier. They did it out here at the coast of, you know, what is it, uh, Scripps. Then Scripps Pier is there. And there's so many ecosystems, different, you know, the mussels put off this waste that the, that the crabs eat, and the crabs create a waste, that they, and they feed the seaweed. So the whole thing is interdependent. So many interdependent uh, food systems. You change the water a point, whatever it is, degree off the coast of Chile and like dominoes over the course of time, all those ecological systems completely change. I mean, that's just a simple example. The sun is a simple, we, you could go on and on and on and on and on. Everything, what to speak of a single cell, you know, but to speak of the human body, I mean, let's not even, we don't even have to get that complicated. But everything is so finely tuned and interdependent, and the odds of all those things falling in place, because the principle behind, we're far afield, but the principle behind survival of the fittest, it rests on mutations. That, you know, that the giraffe with the longer neck can get the little higher leaves, so the ones with the shorter neck, they die out, and the one with the longer neck, his gene pool goes on, you know. But as Sadaputa points out, there's a lot of d problems with that long neck. Watch a giraffe try to drink water. Ah, I mean, he's very prone to prey when he's down there with all four trying to drink water. And to pump the blood all the way up to his brain is a very complicated system to get the brain all the way up there. So, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of holes in the thing. But even then, every evolution, every mutation has to be a positive. You can't make 15 duds and then the 16th mutation, well, that creates a benefit. Because while you've got all those duds that are, you know, defective, you know, you get your arm that doesn't function, you're blind in one eye, or whatever it is, while you got all, I mean, I'm being extreme, but while you've got all those defects, the others are getting ahead of you, because they don't have that defect. So you can say, well, six, seven times out, it's going to create a benefit. No, you've fallen behind. And it works like that with so many different things. And Sadaputu worked out the statistics. And there's another guy who just did it at MIT. Same thing. And they're saying, we're not saying anything. We're not saying God. We're not saying, you know, just, just the facts, man, just the facts. It is so finely tuned that it has not existed long enough to have those many changes. And the principle of mutation creates an improvement eventually that eventually you know, improves the gene pool, and that's what creates evolution. 
there's all these defects and problems and duds and time lost and you know it just it's full of holes so the intelligent conclusion is whatever the nation of the supreme is there's a design there's a design behind the thing it is so finely tuned that it could not have possibly statistically mathematically happened by chance there just isn't enough time a and the mechanism so here it's being described that krishna's poor not okay so we did want to say just to how much time do we have? Oh, geez, we don't have much time. Um, let's jump ahead. Um, leaders sometimes have to chastise. Here we have uh, Pritu Maharaj is chastising Mother Earth. He's about to kill her. So sometimes Prabhupada tells uh, Mukunda Maharaj told me a story that Prabhupada told him there was a young boy four or five years old his parents were killed in a car accident something happened some died some other so he was raised by his aunt and the aunt felt so sorry for the boy that no mother no father what to do so she spoiled the boy and when he would do something wrong, she would think, well, he's got a deprived childhood and it's nature versus nurture and so many different things. So whatever, you know, she coddled him and he wound up fighting. He wound up stealing. He became a criminal. Ultimately, he murdered someone as he grew up as an adult and he was sentenced to die. And in the courtroom, when the judge sentenced him to die, and in those days, who expeditious, they, you know, the gallows was right outside. So the guy was, you know, do you have any last words? And he said, yes, I would like to speak to my aunt. And they thought, well, the boy is going, you know, even though he's a, a stinker and a weasel, and a, he still, he has some affection for his aunt who tried, you know, long-suffering aunt trying to help him. So she came forward, he's there, at the t you know, they're just about to be led off to the gallows. And he says, I want to speak to you. She says, yes. He said, no, no, come close. I want to whisper in your ear. So she's thinking he'll apologize for being such a weasel and I'm sorry I broke your heart. She leans close. Ha! He bit her ear off. Ha! Anyone know why? Very good. He said, Bec it's because of you that I'm in this. Con I mean, oh, we all have free will and independence. But if you, you never chastised me, you never corrected me, and therefore I've turned out like this. So he was very angry. So we are all in this world to be trained. Especially, why are we in an ashram? We're under the direction. And whether we're living in the community, you know, outside or inside, but especially if we're living you know, coming to the temple and serving, we want to be trained. What is the use? You have a block of... M Let me present... Janardanji. I have a block of marble, I have a chisel, and I have Michelangelo. Is that a static position? Does everything just stay as it is? What's, what's the proper use? Well said. Our Mikey picks up the chisel. He actually said he, he's, so the story goes, who knows if it's true, but he was sitting there looking at a huge block, maybe David or La Pieta, who knows what came out of it. But he was sitting there looking at this, per, you know, completely white m Italian marble, just looking and looking. And, and they said, he wasn't sketching on it. They said, what are you doing? He said, I see what I want inside. I can see it. I just want to figure out what to remove. That's the way he sculpted. He had it completely in his picture. He just like chipped, he just took off what he didn't want. You know, like a diamond. You just take off the crust and there it is inside, you know. So that's how he, you know, a genius. So but we are all pure spirit soul, part and parcel of Krishna. We're decorated with what is it? I've forgotten the number. 32, 36? Qualities of a Vaishnava? 26. 
Thank you. Good thing you're here. 26, tw 26 is enough. Even more would be hard, you know. But Ratnabhushna become decorated with, that's, that's a devotee. That's the nature of the soul. Prabhupada said the soul is more splendid than millions of suns. So that's who we are. It's a question of low self-esteem or nobody likes me or, you know, no. But the purpose of the human form of life and especially of devotional service is to remove all of that. To get all that and the pure soul can manifest. So sometimes our leaders, our seniors, I get chastised. I get chastised by the GBC. I picked Shiva Ram Maharaj because for so many reasons, but also he's far more advanced than me. He's heavier than me. He will have the courage to say, you nonsense, don't do that, do this. And everyone needs that. Someone who doesn't want to be guidance or instruction is a f very dangerous, foolish position. So here we see Prithu Marshi has to chastise. It's his job. If he doesn't chastise, he's, violence means, according to Bhagavad Gita, what, what do they call it? Ja, no, what is it, what is it uh, you know, at Oberland College or whatever those, one of those colleges are, that, you know, that, that, you know ag aggressive speech, and, 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 and there's a whole thing that you, you get, you know, y if you're too much in anxiety, you do jazz hands, you know, oh, I need relief. They got all this kind of stuff, you know. Because you, oh, oh, you put, they, they, there's a safe space. Every classroom has to have a safe space that if, if, if the news or, or, or the fact that you got an F on your, your paper or somebody didn't appreciate your point of view, you know, when you were speaking, you can go to the safe corner and just calm down, you know, just get your, you know. What was I going to say about this? No! We want, to ch we want to improve. We want to be molded. We want to be sculpted. We want, we want to become our better self. We don't want to be indulged. Ah, the definition of violence. Because there's all kinds of gender violence. You know, I'm a trans. You know, there's gender fluidity. Today I'm a man. Tomorrow I'm a woman. You didn't pick up that yesterday I was wearing men's clothes. Today I'm dressed as a woman. Here you go, political correctness. And you didn't pick up on it. And so you called me sh he yesterday, but you didn't call me she, or you didn't call me by the neutral pr pronoun there, and therefore you, 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 you were violent to me, and I've got to go to my safe space in my classroom. So how does Bhagavatam describe, Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada says, what is violence? They're calling that violence. But what is violence according to Bhagavad Gita? Hmm? Yes, Dravida. Yeah, to impede someone's spiritual advancement. That's violence. So if I'm okay, you're okay, and it's all lovey-dovey and everybody, you know, and there's no correction, no chastisement, we're not talking about abuse, but we're not talking, you know, blow on the boil, the doctor's got a lancet. And if we don't do that, what kind of leader are we? What kind of friend? We're actually doing violence. But it's a two-way street. As we see here, um, Mother Earth was, okay, I'm being chastised. She didn't go arrogant. She didn't run off to her safe space. She didn't, you know, call the ACLU or, you know. What did she do? Mother Earth. And this, what's happening here? She tried to understand, okay, what a, if you read on in the past time, oh, okay, I'm not giving grains. I'm not providing for the citizens. That's my job. Okay, he's right to be angry. So we should, instead of just getting all defensive and mental and angry, we should try to hear what's the motivation? What's the reason? What's the cause? Let me try to empathetically hear from my leader what's his problem? What's the issue? Maybe I can grow. Maybe I can learn. Oh, maybe I made a mistake. Okay, but... What's also happening? What's the other side of the equation? We're going to end in just a second. But what Boomy Dave is doing what now? 
She, but she's always, she's inquiring, okay, she inquired, what have I done wrong? Why are you angry? Why are you killing me? But if you read on, okay, fine. If you read on in the past time, she's just starting here. What does she also do? She makes her case. She says, hey. I mean, she doesn't say, hey. I mean, there's beautiful prayers and everything. But the living entities I was producing and they were all using for sinful activity. So I was facilitating their greasing the wheels to hell. So I'm holding back. So she has her case. And Preetu was hearing her case. Okay. So when there is dissension, chat, we should try to hear from the other. What are they saying? Why are they saying it? What is the motivation? What can I learn from this? Both the leader and the, I don't know, what, whatever you would say, the, the, the assistant or the junior or senior, whatever the dynamic, the guru, the disciple, the parent, the child, there has to be this reciprocation. And it's only possible when it's free from false ego. So if we understand, wait a minute, we'll, we'll end here. The world is created perfectly. There's Krishna behind it. There's a purpose that I'm here. It is not simply trying to work hard and eat nuts and bolts, but let me get with Krishna's program. And ultimately, Krishna's program is what? What is this world for? Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we, we may die. It is, yes, exactly so. Not that I'm surprised that you got it right. It is simply a springboard. This body, this material world, the whole thing is simply a springboard. A, 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 you know, to give us that bounce to go across, it would cross the ocean of birth and death and come to Krishna's lotus feet. So the world is perfectly designed. There's not a flaw. I mean, we could get into karma and reincarnation. There's, there's, no, there's no paucity of God's mercy. He didn't look the other way and whoop, somebody fell off a cliff. Sorry, missed it. I was, you know. There, there, there's um, a cartoon someone sent me. And it's God at his work desk. And it's got, you know, things coming in, issues going out. And it's got, and he's looking at his computer. And he's, and he found in his spam box all the unanswered prayers. I was wondering why God didn't answer my prayers. Went into his spam box, or it was, you know, he went, he was out, you know, hey, he had to go get a snack and missed my email when I, you know, when I was sent up my prayer flag or whatever. No, it's perfect. Our, where we are right now is perfect. What we're going through is perfect. Everything is perfectly designed by Krishna for that one perfect purpose, which is not to keep us sleeping in this. If you gradually heat up the water on a frog, I've never tried this, I never want to try it, but they say, um, and they do things with frogs. When I, one thing, I, I don't want to get into it. When Sadaput told me that several times he was, was with Prabhupada, when Prabhupada was introduced to a biologist, I took... I remember the first thing I took in biology, eighth grade, we hooked up a double A, you know, one of those D batteries, those big chunky ones, up to a dead frog. And if you hook it up and you turn, the frog will jump. You can make a dead frog jump because you make the muscles, you know, it's electrical and make them, you can make a dead frog jump. So they do so many things on frogs. And remind me, I want to get back to my example about frogs and warm water. But, and they do so many horrible things on frogs and rats and mice. Prabhupada, several times, according to Sadaputta, who I definitely believe, he had biologists, big puffed up PhD, piled high and higher and deeper, permanent head damage, prominent humility disorder. He had them introduced to Prabhupada. And he was, he's a biologist. Prabhupada would, with perfect comedic timing, shake his head and say, poor frogs. And Sadaputta said, every time the guys became apologetic, it just somehow they got right. They said, no, I don't do that, or I know. The, but it was sub would just with that one, 
lean back, shake his head, poor frogs. They would become apologetic. You know, they would, you know, what are you doing? You know, just carving, hacking things. But if you put a frog in warm water and you gradually heat a pan with water, and he's comfortable there, it's nice, he's a, a sauna. You heat it up because you do it in very slight increments, he will not hop out. Like, have you ever seen a number line from black to white, a color line from a, a color bar? Uh, shade bar, shade bar. Grayscale, they call it. Hare Krishna. We're just finishing up class. Oh, definitely. And then we're going to get you a little something, a little prashadam before you leave. There's some mats there. Grab a seat. Yeah. So, a, a scale, uh, a shade bar goes from black at one end and white to the other. But it's got all the different shadings in between. At any fixed point, you don't see a sharp demarcation. You follow me? It's in shades. It's in, so it goes from white to black. And if you look at the two ends, you can see the, see the sharp contrast. But at any point along that line, there's not a sharp contrast. You put a frog in hot water, so they say. We don't try it because of ahimsa nonviolence. But the frog doesn't feel the heat, and therefore it stays. It'll actually stay in there and be killed. We think we're staying in this world. Actually, it's stark. Everyone has to suffer from time, old birth, death, old age, and disease. It is a stark reality. But we spend our time just fooling around, trying to become comfortable in this world. Well, you know, I got a new sofa, and hey, I got cable, and... Well, sure, I was, you know, I had this, you know, whatever horrible disease, but, you know, I, I'm taking pills now, and, you know. And we're not deprecating, you know, medicine and all that stuff. But the, in the overall grand scheme of the thing, just to become comfortable, to be lulled into a dull state of existence. And there's many, language is in the indicative of the consciousness of the, of the society, those speaking it. Hey, it's always dark. It's before the dawn. You've got to take the bitter with the sweet. Every cloud has a silver lining. Those are opiates that lull the conditioned souls into accepting that I should just have a life of a polished dog or cat. Eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. Hey, that's all there is to life. But the Vaishnavas, the sadhus, the introspective sages understand that that is not the purpose of this world. The purpose of this world is for self-realization and to get out if there is an alternative. And we'll end with one last example. Devavrata Prabhu, nice visiting brahmachari. I give him $100. Say, hey. Here's a hundred bucks. You, you know, buy yourself some books, put it towards your fund for India. Get your say, winter will be coming. Buy yourself a cap, you know, warm hat, whatever. You're a nice devotee. He thinks, hey, this Bajranarayan Swami's not so bad. Hey, visit more often, Maharaj. Come again soon, you know. So he goes back to the ashram. He tells the Brahmacharya, hey, you know, Bajranarayan Swami, not such a bad guy. Give me a hundred bucks. Using Krishna's service. Rest of the Brahma Chari, see, that's funny. He gave all of us a thousand dollars. How does he then feel? Of course, he's a sadhu, a saintly person, whatever comes by Krishna's grace. He's equipoised. But human instinct would be, what would human instinct be? You think, hey, hey, come on, hey, Swami, where's my other 900 bucks? Get back here, you know? So the fact of the matter is just to become comfortable in this little world. And to, you know, oh God, help me win the lottery, bring back my girlfriend, I want to get an A, and, you know, let me get that promotion. Okay, fine, all well and good. We're not lazy, we all work hard. We're not advocating that. But that is not really the blessings of God. The, if this material world, if, is it, if, if I'm on death row and I'm a class C prisoner, is success to move to being a class A prisoner? Maybe blue walls, I got a menu, I got a room with a view, but I'm still on death row. Class C, class A, but I'm still on death row, so what? But if you can get out of the prison, 
then you've accomplished something. So the point is this world is balanced perfectly. It's coming from Krishna, who's Purnam. And our situation, the world, what we're going through, everything is perfect. But it's perfect for self-realization. It's perfect to realize how to become freed from this world and go back to the spiritual world, the kingdom of God. How at the time of death, ante narayana shmiti, how to take full shelter of Krishna with no more material desires, m no more material aspirations, no huge pile of sinful karma to bind us, but how to go back home, back to Godhead. There, on that scale, it's perfect. Okay, we can end there. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.